Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Environment Matters. I'm Greg Adolfson. And I'm Kelly Gillenwater. If you're a serious angler and you're interested in fly fishing for native brook trout, then West Virginia's Cherry River is probably on your list of favorite destinations. Heavy mining and logging activity over the years in the watershed had left the stream in less than pristine condition, but restoration efforts started years ago are paying off in a big way. The DEP's Jake Glantz joins us now with a project that's helping improve trout habitat in one stretch of the South Branch by making adjustments to the flow of the stream. Kelly and Greg, the South Branch of the Cherry flows clear and cold, so it's not water quality that's the issue. Years of sediment from runoff have flattened and widened the stream, but a project started last summer looks to change all that by harnessing the force of the water itself. What you see is pretty typical of a disturbed forest channel. Um, it's lost a lot of habitat complexity over the years due to the heavy timber and, and mining operations and runoff that have happened throughout the years. Um, it's, it's at a point now where it's, it's very well managed by the land company. Um, it, it just lacks a little bit of the pristine kind of complexities that you see in a healthy stream. In addition to cold, oxygen-rich water, good trout habitat requires things like well-defined pools and riffles, undercut banks along the outside of stream bends, and large woody debris to provide shade and cover from predators, things in short supply along this particular stretch of water. A lot of what you see in, a, in these disturbed forest channels, uh, it's just a, a steep, flat stream with, with no pools, really. Uh, you lack the large woody debris that you find in some of the more pristine environments. And uh, what we're looking at doing is increasing pool-to-pool -pool spacing for uh, you know, thermal refuge and uh, predatory refuge for trout. Um, we're looking at linking up the pool habitats and uh, you know, just giving a place for the, making a place for the fish to go and uh, an avenue for them to get there. Because of the sensitivity of the area, crews are using a small excavator equipped with rubber tracks to minimize the impact on the stream. That makes it a challenge to move and place these 25-foot long logs, which are used to help redirect the flow. When finished, the project will use more than 70 of these log structures to help create pools and channels. One thing that we like to do when we can is use wood. And the, the landowner, which is Warehouser Lumber, has worked with us in cooperation. They've provided most of the logs. So we're using logs and timber to angle into the stream, to harness the forces of the water itself, basically to place sediment on either side, narrowing the stream, helping to channel the water. So it's a deeper channel. It's not nearly as wide. Uh, but by narrowing that stream, you're creating a lot of forces. And those logs have to be buried into the bed so that in high flows they don't get pulled out. And high flows can happen suddenly when the skies open up. Most of our logs have held, so we know we did it right. And, and that go, comes from years of study and engineering that went into this type of structure. We just have to come in and take those principles and adapt it to this stream. Uh, it's like it was saying, as an adaptive process. You learn as you go what, the, what each individual stream will allow you to do. Um, Mother Nature's fickle. She, she'll only let you do so much and she's gonna do the rest. So we have to work within her bounds. These same techniques have been used on other projects throughout the state, like here on Coal River, to help improve stream flow and control sediment. But this is the first time it's been used on a small native brook trout stream. So far, I'm very happy with what's, what's been done and how it's holding up. I mean, it's really amazing, especially on a stream of this size, to see how the river responds to what you do. Uh, just in this section behind me, we can see structures that were put in last fall and last summer that are completely buried and have narrowed a channel that was 40, 50 feet wide of two inch water well now we've got less than 10 feet of six to eight inch deep water that the trout can live in and swim and travel back and forth. The project is paid for with money from the DEP's Stream Restoration Fund, about $90,000 for this first phase. The DEP and the West Virginia Conservation Agency work together to identify areas suitable for projects like this in order to get the most bang for the buck from the funds. 
Roger and Ross say they've seen a huge improvement to the stream just after a few months of work and say they look forward to applying the lessons learned on the south branch of the Cherry to other similar streams throughout the state. For Environment Matters, I'm Jake Glantz. Thanks, Jake. Besides having to deal with the weather, crews have to finish work by late summer in order to not disturb the trout during spawning season, which happens in early fall.